Hey guys, this is Corey with Seaboard Marine and we're here in the electrical room and we're gonna go over our SMX Digital View Mechanical Engine Digital Instrumentation Package and also touch on a little bit of general mechanical marine instrumentation. So stay tuned. Okay guys, we're here today to talk about the SMX Digital View a digital instrumentation package for mechanical B and C series engines, um, which is a direct replacement for an engine that may have uh, existing mechanical analog gauges, or if you have a new engine, this is a, a generally a plug and play replacement for your B and C mechanicals. But before we get into this, I wanna go ahead and talk about a little bit of overview for marine mechanical instrumentation. For just about every mechanical marine engine, there's three components that make up the harnessing and the instrumentation. You're always gonna have your on-engine harnessing that's gonna distribute between all of the sensors, the sending units, uh, the shutoff, the start and stop, and battery power up to the instruments. From here, you're gonna connect a general extension harness that's gonna be at some variable length, typically from 10 feet up to 40 feet lengths. And this is gonna connect all of your engine components up to the dash where you're gonna have your instrumentation. Now, in terms of instrumentation, uh, Seaboard Marine offers generally three different types. Um, you have your standard Cummins OEM mechanical gauge cluster, which provides your general vital uh, and critical engine parameters, that, which includes oil pressure, zero to 150, voltage, this, is a, this happens to be a 12 volt panel. You're gonna have your TAC, which goes from zero to 4,000 RPM. You have a mechanical hour meter, and you have a zero to 250 degree Fahrenheit uh, coolant temp indicator. This panel also integrates a printed circuit board, which handles the inputs and alarms, which are hard coded into this panel. So anytime you receive an alarm, it's gonna be interpreted by this board, and it's gonna be relayed to one of these lamps and a buzzer. Uh, Seaboard Marine also happens to offer our own uh, needle gauge or analog style instrument panel, which is just a little bit smaller. Okay, the Cummins OEM panel is about approximately eight and a half by 11, and you can see the SMX panel is much smaller. But again, uh, on this panel, we offer the same uh, critical engine parameters, which are oil pressure, voltage, tack, and coolant temperature. Uh, also, this uh, particular panel has an alarm board similar to this one, which interprets and relays engine fault information. The third type of instrumentation that Seaboard Marine offers is our digital view package, which uh, allows you to connect this particular harness and digital screen to your engine. And you can also uh, record and manage the same sort of critical engine parameters, which includes oil temperature, coolant temperature, voltage, tack, you can also integrate uh, a wide array of additional parameters, uh, gear pressure, gear temperature, boost pressure, and exhaust gas temperature are some of the features that, that can be added. In addition to that, we also have the ability to add NEMA 2000 output from this particular package. So as the screen collects and interprets sender information from the engine, this screen will also have the ability to output all that information and broadcast it via the, the NEMA 2000 harness and into the NEMA 2000 network. Okay, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about um, our exclusive digital view product for mechanical engines. When I say that, the SMX digital view screen can actually work with any mechanical engine out there. It doesn't have to be a Cummins engine. Now the harness that we have here is specifically set up to adapt to a Cummins engine. This is what's called an eight by 10 molded connector. So there's eight pins here that handles most of the start, stop and critical engine parameters. And then we have a two pin connector that also gives us the ability to add additional sending units into the system. Now, if you notice here on the Cummins OEM panel uh, and the SMX panel, that same connection is there. So out of the box, the SMX Digital View is ready to connect to either a 6B series or 6C series Cummins engine. But if you happen to have a Caterpillar or a Yanmar or a Lugger or some other mechanical engine, this system will still work. And what we typically do is, is um, for customers that have those engines, is we provide um, a short female pigtail harness that connects into the male of, of the Digital View harness, which allows you 
to splice connect the main critical wires here into your existing system. And again, uh, it's a very simple approach. Uh, there's, there's four wires dedicated for power, and all the rest of the wires are basically signal inputs for any sort of analog things, including engine oil pressure, coolant temperature, boost pressure, and all the other options that I mentioned earlier. Uh, for, for setups that have those additional parameters, sometimes when we pick off sending units with this two-pin molded connector, we also provide a short two-pin uh, brown and red harness that allows you to connect to those additional sending units on your engine. Uh, this particular harness is meant to connect to both the boost pressure input and the gear temperature input. And when you purchase this system, those instructions are included. Uh, one of the other inputs, which is a really nice feature to have and you don't see very often, is an exhaust gas temperature input. And that exhaust gas temperature input allows you to add a thermocouple to your engine uh, exhaust outlet. And you get included a set of lead wire that connects the thermocouple to the amplifier. And there's an included amplifier as well. This amplifier takes your engine's um, ignition power source and allows the thermocouple to be interpreted by the amplifier and the amplifier sends this signal to the screen in which the screen also is able to interpret that. So you have the ability to go from 0 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit uh, with, with the amplifier. It does require an amplifier since the thermocouple uh, signal is a very, very small milliamp driven signal. It's not strong enough of a signal for the screen to interpret just from the probe. So, in that case, we had to incorporate a small amplifier that amplifies the signal uh, from a milliamp um, gradient all the way up to a zero to five volt gradient, which the screen can interpret uh, nicely. Uh, one other thing to mention that's very critical is that if you do have a mechanical engine that you're adapting our digital view system to that is not a factory Cummins and does not have video factory sending units supplied, then you will be required to change out the sending units for oil, at least oil pressure and coolant temperature on your mechanical engine. Now if you do have a Cummins factory supplied engine that comes with factory supplied VDO 0 to 150 and VDO 0 to 250 degree Fahrenheit sending units, then these are not required. You can leave them on the engine and the, the system will work plug and play. Now there are some Cummins mechanical engines out there that boat builders tend to use other gauges. So if you have gauges like Faria or Stuart Warner, some other type of gauges that are not video, again, you will have, you'll be required in order to use the digital system to change out to the 0 to 150 video sending unit for oil and 0 to 250 Fahrenheit sending unit for uh, coolant temperature. And we're going to dive in a little bit on the SMX digital view system for mechanical engines. Uh, and talk a little bit about the harnessing, we're going to talk a little about the inputs, and we're going to talk a little bit about what components are on this harness and understanding how this is put together. Um, when you purchase the system, uh, it comes complete with the digital screen, sun cover, gasket, mounting template, um, Cole Hersey brass marine grade key switch. Um, it also comes with a few other components that I get questions on a lot, a lot so I'd like to go ahead and, and just elaborate. Uh, you'll notice there'll be a 12-volt battery pack on this particular harness. I get a lot of questions for that. The reason there's a 12-volt battery pack and a standard 12-volt relay on this harness is because every time you go to crank over your big old mechanical engine, you're putting a very heavy load on the batteries as the engine's cranking over. And that load creates a pretty significant voltage drop, and that voltage drop makes the screen not happy and the screen likes to reset. So uh, as soon as the key is turned on and in the crank position, there's a, there's a relay that connects and there's its diode protected, allows the 12 volts to be sent to the screen and keep it on as you're cranking. Makes uh, life a little bit better. Uh, the next thing I like to talk about is some of the inputs on this harness and then we'll go ahead and fire up the screen and get a sense of what it looks like. We'll go ahead and turn the ignition on. We'll notice the screen uh, starts to boot up. Now on the digital screen, you'll notice in the center of the screen, there's a number. In this case, there's a number one. There's actually four different screens in this system, which allows you to put um, parameters in different locations based on what makes uh, sense for you. 
So if you press the left button here, you'll see now we have a number two. We have different parameters, uh, boost pressure, exhaust temp, gear pressure, and gear temp. So these are kind of the optional inputs that you can get with this package. Screen three is another four parameters. So there's all kinds of things. You can put this in any sort of configuration by pressing the select button and then choosing which parameter you'd like to show in that particular position. Uh, page four is your trip information and uh, which, which includes fuel and hours. So as the engine's being used, you will accrue hours here. You can also reset trip hours and uh, fuel information as well. There's also a final screen which allows you to have one big parameter. So customers that have more than one screen sometimes like to show attack and then some of the other four critical parameters on a different screen. Okay, so let's dive into the screen itself. Um, the TAC input for a mechanical engine in this particular kit must be driven by a magnetic style or inductive type of pickup that sits inside of the bell housing and hovers just very close over the flywheel. So as the flywheel spins, the mag pickup sends a pulse signal. Uh, the screen interprets that pulse signal and gives you an accurate TAC reading. Uh, oil pressure, again, is driven by a 0 to 150 PSI video sending unit. Very straightforward, very simple. That's our blue wire here. So if we mimic a sender, you can see the screen reacts to that sending unit. Okay, same thing, brown wire. That's our coolant temperature sending unit. You can see on the screen that it's reading that input as well. Okay, screen number two, boost. Now that's a that's a two pin input. So uh, if you if you opted for the boost pressure uh, input, then you would receive a two pin harness, and the two pin harness would connect to um, again, a video sending unit that you would install into the intake manifold uh, of the engine to give you boost pressure. And that input is right here. So if we mimic a sender, you can see the boost pressure input response. Okay, gear pressure. Now gear pressure is the white wire on the common standard harness. So if you notice on the eight pin here, there's a white wire. That white wire has already been provisioned for gear pressure. If you have a 6CTA, that wire is actually distributed on the on-engine harness. A 6BTA, you may have to extend that, but that's the wire you want to use for transmission oil pressure. If you purchase that option, you will receive a sending unit that is compatible with this system, 0 to 400, again, video analog style input. So if we mimic an input onto that, we'll notice that the screen will respond. What's nice about this particular gauge is once you get below a certain pressure, which is 100 PSI, uh, for guys that have uh, transmissions that have trolling valves, the resolution on the gauge will jump from 0 to 400 down to 0 to 100 to give you a little bit more resolution as you're trolling. Uh, it'd be a little bit difficult if you were trying to troll with a 0 to 400 range. So that's a nice feature. Once you get past 100, it gives you a little bit more uh, detail to be able to troll. Uh, gear temperature, again, gear temperature is a, a two-pin input, so if you opt for that particular input, you'll receive the two-pin harness, and the red wire on that harness would be for that particular input. You notice here that, again, it responds. Alarms on this system are driven and are software-based, meaning that inside of the configuration file that the display has, has all of the alarm set points, be it um, low temperature thresholds. It also has a timer for low, low pressure and high temperature thresholds. So if you have a transmission that tends to behave a certain way, you can modify the configuration file to either modify the threshold when you want it to alarm or modify the time it takes to be below or above certain threshold before the screen will alarm. Uh, another feature is if you have the NEMA 2000 harness uh, and package, the output package for the display, um, enabled, then the alarms will also broadcast to the NEMA 2000 network. So anytime there's an alarm here, it also alarms on that communication bus as well. There's also a red wire on this particular harness. It might be hard to see, but there's a red wire that comes out of pin three on the main connector. This wire, upon alarm, will close to ground. So if you were to put a buzzer on the positive side and put this wire onto the negative side of the buzzer, every time uh, this unit alarms, it would also drive an external buzzer, which is also a nice feature. Current rating on that is no more than, uh, definitely no more than one amp. I would say I would keep it well below that. Just for a minute for a buzzer or a light or something like A buzzer, a lamp, or both, or a relay. The update procedure for the digital view screen is as follows. You're gonna remove the protective cover in the back. 
with the screen powered on, you'll place the USB stick into the back of the screen and the screen uh, when loaded, there's nothing on this USB file, so it's not going to do it. But uh, when the screen no recognizes the fact that there's a USB stick in the back of the screen, it will uh, it will load the configuration file and update the screen and reboot. So it's all automatic. It's all automatic. All you got to do is plug it in. Just plug it in. For, for configuration changes, uh, anything to the alarms or the set points, you need to email Corey at Seaboard Marine and tell me exactly how you want those parameters changed and I will send you a configuration file with those changes uh, that you can load on to the USB data stick that was provided with the package that you purchased. Okay guys that's a wrap. Hope you liked our video on marine mechanical instrumentation. If you have any questions please feel free to send us an email or hop onto our online forum and stay tuned for other videos about everything Cummins Marine.